Hey guys, let's get more news about Lakers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. D'Angelo Russell proves he's the Lakers' key to a title in win over Thunder. Just days after losing to the defending NBA champions the Los Angeles Lakers had another tough challenge at home as the team hosted the Oklahoma City Thunder on Monday night. Heading into Monday the Thunder were the number one seed in the Western Conference with a 42-17 record. After winning two of the first three games against the Thunder, the Lakers had a real chance to send a statement to OKC on Monday night. With a win, the Lakers would officially cement themselves as the team who the Thunder definitely did not want to see in the first round. That is exactly what the Lake Show did, overcoming a slow start in the first quarter to rally to a comfortable 12-point win. The Lakers dominated the game after a slow start with D'Angelo Russell getting red-hot in the second half to put the game away. Russell, who has had several impressive moments this season, had arguably his most impressive stretch of play in the second half against the Thunder. This was more than just a good game for D'Lo, though, as it was also a firm reminder of how important he is to this Lakers team. For better or worse, the Los Angeles Lakers are going to go as far as D'Angelo Russell can take them this season. Russell is not the best player on the Lakers, nor is he the most important, but he is the difference between the Lakers being a middling team and being a true title contender. As great as LeBron James and Anthony Davis are, they can only do so much and the superstars need more help to consistently beat the best teams in the league. If the Lakers are going to go on a deep playoff run, they need a third player to step up and take some of the pressure off LeBron and AD. DLO is that player and when everything is going right it is a beautiful sight to see. When Russell is cooking the Lakers' offense is so much more dynamic and it opens up the flow of everything else that the Lakers do. When Russell is playing poorly it often stagnates the offense and checks Russell out on the other end as a process. Darvin Ham has had a quick hook with Russell, rightfully so with his past, and it takes this dynamic presence completely out of play for the Lakers. Russell's hot streak in the second half is what cemented the win for the Lakers. If the team is going to win games in the playoffs, then Russell is going to have to turn in showings like this on a consistent basis. If not, the Lakers aren't going to be able to beat the Thunder come April and May. Lamar Odom shares story of how Kobe Bryant called himself better than Michael Jordan on the Lakers' bus. Kobe Bryant will be remembered as one of the greatest players to ever step on a basketball court. The Black Mamba set out to be the single greatest player in the history of the game, and after a 2009 game winner against the Milwaukee Bucks, Bryant told Lamar Odom that he felt he was better than Michael Jordan. We were on the bus one night, I think this is after he hit a game winner against Milwaukee. My n asterisk 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 a comes on the bus and says in front of me and fish, yo, I'm better than Mike. I was like, you're better than Mike? That's how you feeling? Lakers fans react to another dominant win over the Thunder, team clicking at the right time. Lakers fans react to another dominant win over the Thunder, team clicking at the right time. At the time of this quote, Kobe was a four-time champion in December 2009. His feelings must have become even stronger after he led the Lakers to the 2010 championship, winning the fifth ring of his career. The shot he hit on the Bucks was an instant highlight, as it sealed a 107-106 OT win for the Lakers. Bryant would never compete for a championship again, seeing his three-peat attempt in 2011 be thwarted with a sweep loss to eventual champions, the Dallas Mavericks. If Kobe was to win a sixth title, his name would have been atop the GOAT conversation more often. But the reality of his career doesn't necessarily reflect Kobe as the GOAT. His first three titles came with arguably the most dominant center to ever play, Shaquille O'Neal, who won the three finals MVPs of the 2000-2002 Pete. Nonetheless, Kobe's legacy is indisputable among the ten greatest players of all time. Nobody would put him behind anyone except Jordan when it comes to shooting guards, and large swathes of NBA fans do view Kobe as the GOAT. Kobe Bryant told Michael Jordan he'd beat him one-on-one. -on -one. 
Kobe never wanted to be viewed as lesser than MJ, even when the pair developed a close friendship. MJ used to mentor Kobe and even praised the then youngster on repeated occasions. Everyone could see the parallel between the two players, especially with Kobe heavily emulating how MJ played. Phil Jackson, a coach who won 11 titles between coaching Jordan and Bryant, shared an interesting story about Kobe telling MJ that he could beat him in a one-on-one. -on -one. We had a little meeting in the cigar room of the bar downstairs, Jackson said. Michael and I were sitting there and Kobe walked in after a shower and the press whatnot. He sat down, and, he said, Michael, I can take you one-on-one. -on -one. And Michael said, well, I think you might, I'm 37, you're 22, right. The fact that Jordan even used age to concede the argument to Kobe shows how much he respected him. A 22-year-old Kobe could beat a 27-year-old Jordan, but MJ himself admitting that shows the admiration he had for Kobe. I would bet if a no-name basketball player went up to a nearly 65-year-old Jordan, the six-time finals MVP would believe he'll cook that opponent. But Kobe isn't just another opponent. Their competitive rivalry fueled Bryant to achieve more and birthed his legendary work ethic. Even if Kobe couldn't surpass Jordan, it's clear that there's been no one who's come even that close among guards in NBA history. Lakers News, Nuggets Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray praised LeBron James for reaching 40,000 career points. The Los Angeles Lakers had a big task in front of them on Saturday night as they hosted Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, and the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Aside from the Lakers attempting to end their losing streak to Denver, the other big story coming into the contest was LeBron James being set to become the first player to reach 40,000 career points. Early in the second quarter, he would do just that, attacking the basket and finishing a layup to reach a milestone that seemed impossible. Just surpassing Lakers legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the top spot was something that many thought would never be done, but now LeBron is continuing to stretch that record out even further and opening up a club where only he resides. What LeBron has done is truly something special and even the opposition recognizes it. After the game, Jokic praised James for reaching that milestone. It's a great, great accomplishment, Jokic said. It's just amazing how many years he's playing at an extremely high level. When you see now who can reach him, it's really hard to see. Maybe, Anthony Edwards, maybe Luka, Donich, if he plays long enough. It's amazing to share the floor with a guy like, LeBron. Unfortunately for LeBron and the Lakers, he was unable to enjoy the accomplishment too much as Jokic and Murray took over in the second half, ultimately leading Denver to a 10-point win, their eighth straight over L.A. While Murray recognized how great of an accomplishment that was for LeBron, he was also very happy to ruin the night with a Nuggets victory. Obviously the first player to do that, Murray noted. I think the biggest thing for me is his durability and consistency with the way he's been able to keep up that level of performance throughout the years no matter the age. I think that's the biggest thing, being not injured and stuff like that, knock on wood. But it was nice to come in here and shut it down. We just wanted to take the life out of the arena and we did a good job of weathering the storm and throwing all the haymakers. Murray scored 17 of his 24 points after halftime as the Nuggets pulled away down the stretch, despite the best efforts of the Lakers. What LeBron accomplished on this night may not be seen again for decades, but it was Jokic, Murray and the Nuggets that walked off the court with a smile on their faces. LeBron James has always been about winning first and foremost. While he thanked the Lakers fans for the love they showed him after reaching the 40,000 career point mark and called it cool to be the first to do something like this, LeBron admitted it was bittersweet in the end due to the Lakers losing. But for me, the main thing is always the main thing, and that's to win, James noted. I just hate that it had to happen in a defeat, especially versus a team that plays extremely well. And we played some good basketball tonight but wasn't able to close it out. So, bittersweet. But I enjoyed every moment tonight though out on the floor. And you, fan, what do you think of the situation Nikola Jokic?
Leave your opinion in the comments.